Meet Akira Tendo, a young dude trapped in a boring office job that he totally despises. Picture this, a few years back, Akira was all pumped up to conquer Tokyo after finishing school, but oh boy, to that excitement vanish. Why? Because he found out his company is like a vampire, sucking the happiness out of its employees. Poor Akira, he's stuck in a gloomy mood. Now, here comes the twist. Akira's got this coworker named Saori Otori. She's like a unicorn in the office, the only one who's actually nice to him. But hold your horses, there's a catch. She's also the boss's special someone. Complicated, right? But wait, things get even crazier. Guess what? Zombie apocalypse time. Tokyo's swarming with the undead, and you think people would be panicking. Not Akira, though. He's like, hey, zombies. Welcome to my world of misery. He's oddly thrilled because it's like he's finally free from his dreaded job. So get this. Akira dashes to Sori's place to rescue her from the zombie mess. Drumroll, please. Surprise. He's a bit late to the party. Sori and the big boss have joined the zombie club. Akira's like, boss, I quit, and gives him a little push. Oops, there goes the boss, but Akira's not done. He goes all heartfelt and confesses his feelings to zombified Sori. Yeah, you heard that right, he's pouring his heart out to a zombie crush. Then like a superhero in the making, he makes a run for it. Why? Because he realizes he could be zombie Cho anytime soon. Now, here's the kicker. Akira's not giving up that easily. He whips up a bucket list of 100 cool things he wants to do before he turns into a zombie snack. And that's how our gloomy office guy turns into a zombie fighting, heart confessing, bucket list checking champ in the middle of undead chaos. So, Akira's riding high on his newfound freedom wave, kicking off his mornings with a can of beer. But, oh no, he realizes he's run out of his precious brew. Sneaky as a mouse, he slips down a pipe, being all sneaky till the zombies won't catch him. Down there, he bumps into the Kosaka family, his neighbors who've pretty much given up hope. But guess what? Akira's cheerful vibes give them a glimmer of hope. Go Akira! His journey continues to a convenience store where he meets another survivor raiding the shelves. But hold on, this survivor's got an attitude. She scolds Akira for grabbing stuff she thinks isn't necessary for survival. Soon though, things take a twist. She saves Akira's skin and then takes off on her own adventure. Akira's trusty bike? Yup, it's toast. But luck's on his side. He stumbles upon a motorcycle and makes a speedy escape. Back home though, things are a bit grim. Zombies have decided to crash the Kasaka's place. Akira beats a retreat to his apartment, and in this quiet moment, he's all serious and thoughtful. He's pondering his situation, and here's where things get interesting. Akira starts making a list, a big list of 100 things he wants to do before he turns into a zombie. Now picture this. We take a peek into the past, a flashback to before Akira entered the scene. Our tough survivor girl, she was all about staying alive, like super hardcore. But after meeting Akira, something shifted in her. She's thinking, hey, maybe there's more to life than just surviving. And that's where our story takes an exciting turn. Alrighty, so while all this crazy stuff is happening, a bunch of survivors led by this person, Sho, are giving their all to defend a place called Club Showtime. Meanwhile, Akira's up to something cool. He's checked off Grow a Rad Beard from his big list of things to do before zombie time. But wait, there's more. Akira's got another goal, find his buddy Kensho. And guess what? He suddenly realizes his phone is blinking with messages he hasn't read. Over on Kensho's side, he's in a bit of a jam at Club Show time. Just then, his phone buzzes, it's Akira. Akira's making a promise to meet up with Kensho. So, Kensho starts making his way to a place called Shinjuku. While he's on his journey, Akira's reminiscing about the good old times he and Kensho had before this whole zombie mess. Just when things are looking pretty grim for Sho and the gang, a miracle, or maybe just a big noise, distracts the zombies. What's causing the ruckus? Well, Akira and Kencho are finally back together. Here comes the heart-to-heart -heart moment. Akira's like, hey, Kencho, sorry I was kinda jealous of you back in the day. And then, bam, zombies start chasing them. Onto the roof they go. But wait, there's more drama. Akira does this epic rooftop jump to another building like some superhero action. And then he's like, Kencho, do it too. But Kencho, he's not so sure. He's got a secret to spill. He totally hated his job as a real estate agent. The real deal. He's got dreams of being a stand-up comedian, and here comes Akira, being the best buddy ever, giving Kensho a confidence boost. You won't believe it. Kensho sheds his clothes and takes the leap to success. As the sun sets, Akira and Kensho are having a good old chat, and just to keep things interesting, they're doing it in their birthday suits. Yeah, they're butt naked. Hold on to your hats, because this is where things get even wilder. Akira and Kensho put on their adventure hats and decide to hit up an department store. You know what's on their shopping list? A fancy flat screen TV. 
It's right there on Akira's big bucket list. So off they go. But guess what? They're not the only ones exploring the store. They bump into an old guy and three super cool flight attendants, Yukari, Maki, and Reika. Suddenly, their department store trip just got a lot more interesting. They all end up hanging out, having a feast and a good time together. And get this, that was also on Akira's list of things to do. But wait, things start to get a bit crazy. Akira's trying a bit too hard to impress the ladies and drinks a little too much. Meanwhile, Kensho and Maki slip away to the furniture section for some private time. But oh no, danger strikes. Reiko, one of the flight attendants, gets attacked by the old man, who's now all zombified. Yukari rushes to Akira, and they have a heart-to-heart -heart talk about their dream jobs. Just then, Kensho steps into the commotion, and things take a dark turn. Maki meets a tragic end, and Kensho has to defend himself by taking out Rika's zombie head. And here's the heartbreak, Yukari. The flight attendant is about to share something important with Akira, but she gets attacked and bitten by the old man zombie. Even though Akira's begging her not to, Yukari bravely sacrifices herself to protect them from the danger. Akira and Kencho manage to escape the chaos with their shiny new flat screen TV. When they finally make it back to their base, Akira adds another wish to his bucket list. He wants to recapture that dream he had as a kid. Akira is determined to chase down his childhood dream, and guess what that is? Becoming a superhero, just like those caped crusaders from comics. But here's the twist. He needs a shark suit, and where better to get one than the aquarium? So off he goes with Kencho to grab that fantastic outfit. Meanwhile, the girl we met earlier is having her own wild ride. She's on a bus, minding her own business, when suddenly, bam, one of the passengers goes all zombie on them. Panic breaks out, but guess where they all end up? Yep, you got it, the aquarium. And guess who comes to the rescue? It's none other than Akira himself. He swoops in like a superhero and saves the day. But hold on, things get a bit dicey. Akira's trying to have a chat with the girl, and she's got questions. She's not sure if he's the real deal or what. Just as things start to settle down, a loud noise shakes things up. Akira and Kensho rush to check it out, and guess what they find? A zombified shark with legs is causing all sorts of chaos. It's like something straight out of a sci-fi horror movie. As people are scrambling to escape, our girl Shizuka Mikazuki gets left behind. But not to worry, Akira's on it. He swoops in again and saves her. And here comes the genius part. Shizuka's got a plan to take down the crazy shark. Kensho, being the brave buddy he is, strips down for a wild distraction. And while that's happening, Akira gets all tech savvy and uses electricity to zap the shark. Before they part ways, Akira and Shizuka exchange contact info. And just like that, Akira and Kensho are off on their next adventure, headed to Gunma. Akira and Kensho, being the clever duo they are, score a couple of super fancy gold watches. With those treasures in hand, they set their sights on Gunma, the next stop on their crazy ride. They roll up to an RV dealership, and guess who's there? None other than Shizuka. They join forces, and after checking out a bunch of snazzy RVs, they pick one that's just right for their journey. Off they go, cruising along until suddenly, whoops, a spike strip appears out of nowhere, causing some trouble and hurting poor Kencho. But wait, there's a twist. Out of the shadows comes a guy named Ganzu Kosuji, and guess what? He used to be Akira's boss. Yep, small world, right? Kosuji's got a crew with him, and things are tense. Akira's feeling nervous, but here's the kicker. He makes a deal with Kosuji. It's a reluctant agreement, but Akira decides to work for him for two days. Why? In exchange, they get to use Kosuji's truck stop. The next day rolls around, while Shizuka's hanging out with Kensho. Things are getting pretty weird with Kosuji. He's acting all annoyed, and guess what? He's putting on a fake show, pretending he's throwing a welcome party for Akira and his buddies. Akira's just chilling some beers, and Kosuji's not too thrilled about it. And then things take a real twist. Kosuji spills the beans, he's using Akira, the zombies, and everyone else as cheap labor. But the story's not finished yet, comment down if you want a part 2. Thanks for watching.